This is Cathy Bogan for Consortium News. I'm at the University of Sydney, Australia, and uh, a protest is about to start. I just arrived and I'm going to circulate and uh, ask some people what's happening. Hi, I'm Cathy Vogan from Consortium News. Oh, your tent is blowing over. I'm just covering this. I mean, we're a Washington outlet mm -hmm. and we're covering it across the United States. Okay. Students are protesting. You're doing the same protest yeah. as you, yep. but they're getting gassed and beaten. Yes. Do you expect any trouble here today? Um. I, we think it's hard to say. Like the yeah. uh, universities of Sydney management say they won't take any action until we uh, to like break the um, uni rule, like damage property or something. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's. But just uh, being camped here is okay. It's we think it's okay at least for now, but yeah, yeah we don't know how this things will go on. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and how long have you been been here? Um, I think we've been we started on Tuesday, Tuesday at yeah. five p.m. Yeah. So tonight will be our fourth night. Yeah. What are you doing for something to eat and going across the road to get something? People right? have been really lovely. People from the community have been providing food. Uh -huh. like families for Palestine is here with all their like um, children. Uh, they've been providing yeah, food to eat, well, uh, good. And drinks of water. Yeah. Good atmosphere here then in the evenings? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Campfire? No. No, no fires, <laughs> no naked flames. Yeah, but um, it's not too cold, is it? No, it's not too bad. It's only April. So. Yeah, that's right. But I might I should probably go. Oh, whoops. oh God, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. That's not ours. Someone's just left that. Oh. That's a bit messy. Oh. It's a terrible drink anyway. Yes. <laughs> here's, a, here's an anti-ad for Red Bull. <laughs> Stinks. Well, it all looks quite peaceful here. Um, as those people have said, uh, unless they do some damage, um, there's not going to be any problem with the university. They're allowed to say what they like. A little bit late in starting because it's just it's five past one already. Yeah, there's a situation. Oh, is there? What, what kind of situation? No one knows. It's not to do with us. Was Oh, a different... No, yeah, it's just um, the, some buildings have been evacuated. Evacuated? Yeah. Oh, so some kind of um, threat reported perhaps? We, no, one, no one knows No one knows. Sure. Yeah. Protest at 1 p.m. Well, this is it is 1 p.m. Yeah, we're going to start in a few seconds. You don't Which have any good. concern for your safety today? No, no, I don't think anyone does. Yeah, I've been told that even camping is all right as long as no damage is done. Yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of you know, it's a reasonable attitude, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think in a sense, like you know. It wouldn't have been, you know, so so accommodating if it weren't for us, you know, protesting for seven months beforehand and you know going out and yeah. fighting for it for so long. And so, and yeah. Hi, yeah. Hey, uh, it's nice to see you. Oh, nice to see you too. Oh, yes. oh, um, I am uh, recording at the moment. Oh, hello, it's you. Yeah, I covered the first town hall to opera house protest. I was one of the ones who could prove with my raw footage that oh, those right. things didn't oh, yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. Anthony, you're going to speak? How's that all panning out now? No more trouble? With the weekend protest? Yeah, with it, yes. Uh, no, no big troubles really. Yeah, yeah, we're still going. Still getting thousands out every week. Yeah, yes. we'll be there again Sunday, one o'clock. And you're from Palestine Action Group. Yeah, that's is that, right. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Which, yeah. Can you remind us of your name again? Josh. Josh, that's right. Josh Lee. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hey, gang. No, there was. Uh, it was very difficult at first with the, these, you know, 
exaggerated and somewhat mendacious accusations of yes. anti-Semitism. Oh, of course, yeah. No, they'll never stop slinging those accusations because it's all they've got really to try to silence us. And yeah, it's not going to work. But I walked with you. I was there the whole time from go to woe. Good on you. And uh, it was a very peaceful yeah. event. Yeah, very that's peaceful. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's Have you right. heard about yeah. what's happening in the United States? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, just crazy levels of repression over there, like uh, yeah. rubber bullets, um, tear gas the being fired are having at a, in Georgia. Yeah, a, a really um, tough time. Yeah, it's a crazy um, repressive atmosphere over there. Um, but it's still that is not working to cow the mobilization, which is very inspiring because they're up against yeah a lot of a very hostile political climate. Yes. Um, but still fighting on, so it's yeah. But yeah, there it was a hundred of them arrested the other day, and then so I just got more, a call. A since, yeah. uh, well, uh, my news outlet is in Washington, right. and I got a call this morning to say Chris Hedges, you know Chris Hedges, yeah, yeah. Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist. Yeah. He got arrested. Oh, for, he was for, arrested, was he? He got arrested for reading a poem. Yeah, right. Okay. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was at Princeton University, yeah. and my colleague is at Washington University. Yeah today and he said the police were on the way as well but i think the, the well, they always try to pretend these wars are for somehow for democracy and freedom right but the first thing to go is our democratic right and our freedom to protest against the wars you know well that's same right. things happen in every war uh where they're very determined to try to crush yeah. any resistance and they've got a first amendment yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of good that does. We don't yeah. even have one, and it seems like we've got a little bit more free speech here. <laughs> yeah, I think the political climate's a bit different. Yeah. I'm going to have to. Um, yes, yeah, thank you so on. much, Josh. Uh, but I do I think it's going just around just around and chasing down. Uh, yeah. It just happens to be going at the same time. Are there any staff members here? Or just yeah, I, mean, I think we're almost all staff members. Oh, you're all staff. Yeah, we're all staff. Well, that's, uh, is your name Nick? Oh, 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 I'm Cathy Vogan from Consortium News. Hi, Cathy. Yeah, pleased to meet you. And this is amazing that the staff are, have joined in. Is Jake Lynch around he's, as well? He's, he's overseas. Oh, he is, Otherwise is he? he would be. All right, so what can we expect here today? Hopefully not trouble. Why would there be trouble? Well, because it's, there is a lot of trouble all over the United States. We're, we're a DC um, news outlet and my colleagues are filming around the United States and those students are being treated very roughly. We know where the trouble comes from. Trouble comes from police, comes from university administrations. Yes. Um, this encampment has been basically given the green light by the university administration here, which is a good thing. And it's a result of uh, just concerted pressure for Palestine that's been exerted on campus yes. ever since October the 7th specifically, but for many years before that as well. But now the university has said as long as there's no damage done, is that what... My understanding is that they've said that this encampment can continue subject to a set of conditions that put conditions on what they expect to, to happen, but I don't know, you have to talk to one people. Thank you all so much. I just want to start off by acknowledging traditional owners of the land on which we are here today, and as a writer and journalist and Jewish man who's written about this issue for years, seeing what is happening here at Sydney University and across the world is remarkable and inspiring. So I want to start off by first acknowledging the organisers of this, whoever you are, I know there's a number of you here, to say, let's put our hands together to say congratulations for doing this. Because seeing this kind of solidarity between here, the US and obviously what's happening in Palestine is significant and important and actually historical because in so many ways what's being said here connects to what is Sydney University and many Australian universities are doing largely out of the public eye, namely working with some of the worst arms dealers in the world. Sydney University in the last years has signed deals with Talos which is one of the worst arms dealers on the planet. And the idea that that is done without public conversation, frankly without controversy, speaks volumes about why talking about this collusion is so important. We're seeing across the world really, led in some ways by what's happening in the US, at Columbia and many other universities, a real generational fight for what is happening in Palestine, a massacre on a scale in my view, and I would say inarguable view, far worse 
than what happened in 1948. This is the scale we are talking about. The death and destruction in Palestine now, in the last six months, is worse than 1948. 1948 was the Nakba, as everyone here would know, the catastrophe which saw the displacement of 750,000 Palestinians, the death of roughly 15 to 20,000 Palestinians. Think about what's happening now to Palestinians in Gaza. 35, 40, maybe 45,000 Palestinians have been killed in the last six months. Yay! Millions have been displaced. And this is what the supporters of that want not to be talked about. To talk about everything else, the allegation that these kinds of protests in Australia, in the US or elsewhere, are somehow infused with anti-Semitism is a blatant lie and needs to be called out yeah. constantly. Yeah. Because that collusion is an aim to distract from what is happening in Palestine, which is a slaughter done, I feel, in my name as a Jew. Now, obviously, I'm anti-Zionist. Israel does not speak for me. But Israel claims to speak for all Jews around the world. And it's important to say that so many Jewish people, growing numbers of Jewish people, especially young Jews, are saying, not in my name. This does not, this does not speak for us. And are partnering with Palestinians and various other groups to say, not in my name. So I would just finish by saying that these kinds of events and protests are important to be supported. There should be massive pressure on Sydney University and frankly all universities in Australia that are openly, although often quite privately, colluding with the worst arms dealers on the planet. And the idea that a university can get away with that is shameful. Yeah. So, in conclusion, I would just say that I am proud to be here in solidarity with this um, with the organisers, and more importantly, to say that we are seeing what is happening in Palestine, and there is no turning back, no coming back from what Israel is doing in Palestine. You do not kill 35, 45,000 Palestinians in six months and think that it is business as usual. It is not. What is needed now, more than ever, which is being talked about in Australia, in the US, elsewhere, are arms embargoes, yeah. boycotts, sanctions. <laughs> what eventually brought down apartheid South Africa in 1994 was not because white South Africans woke up one day and went, gee, this apartheid's pretty awful. There were some white opponents of apartheid, to be sure, but the vast majority were not. And what brought down that regime, apart from, of course, unbelievably inspiring ANC work in South Africa, was global action. Were protests, were boycotts, were sanctions, were arms embargoes. That is needed against Israel today. I'll leave that with you. Thank you. Thanks so much for that, Auntie. I just think he deserves another round of applause again.